and as it may. Let's pray. Abba, we just come before you right now. We lift you up and thank you, Lord, for this Shabbat, Lord. And again, for enabling us to do this 52 times a year. It is staggering to me that, uh, that when you want something and try to make it clear that it's important, and certainly it's the first thing that you sanctified, that you blessed, that we get to do this and take advantage of uh, delving into your word and opening up Lord via your word, via your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, Lord, pour into us everything that we need to know because you put people in our path and all of this is for that reason so that we can share with people who, who don't read the word yet all that they need to know so that they can come into your kingdom. We praise you and we thank you. Be with us today as we open your word and be with everything about this service uh, and everything that we do on Shabbat, Lord. We praise you and thank you in the precious name of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Yeah. Praise God. All right, so I always like to start every session that we do with God's sightings. And so from week to week to week, um, I know beyond a shadow of <laughs> that somewhere in the course of your existence, there had to be some little thread of evidence of the fact that you see him at work somewhere. Okay, can anybody ha have anything that you'd like to share with us? Dennis, please. Okay, so I've been praying for um, constantly for my co-workers because none of them are God, and I am constantly hearing laughter. Constant laughter, peace, and you know, laughter is a reflection of that, and, and I'm seeing the effects of what I believe in my prayers, and, and I'm kind of, not at work, but everywhere, but I'm, so I'm saying the effects, continuously seeing his, uh, um, everything that he's involved in, I mean, anywhere you look, the nature, sky, interactions with people, my interactions with people, it's amazing, it's amazing. wonderful. Amen. Amen. Yeah, uh, it, he's everywhere. Yes. Okay. Amen. And what comes to mind is that people sometimes get confused when they look up and they see the constellations in the sky. And some people have come to call it astrology, which <laughs> is a total misnomer. Okay. But the stars in the sky, as my friend Dr. G. James Kennedy used to say, is the Lord garnishing the sky. And I love that term, the same way you would put a platter of food on the table, but somehow you would garnish it, you would decorate it to make it look- um, Appealing. What? Appealing. Appealing, thank you, there's the word. Okay, so, um, uh, so he's garnished the sky with those stars, because it is the gospel. Amen. It is the good news of Yeshua the Messiah. Nothing short of. And when you look up, you should be able to see that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anybody else have anything to share uh, in the course of the week? Um, I had a moment. You had a moment? No. <laughs> I had Rebecca, please. I had something. All my life, I thought my father was this incredible preacher that brought this great big building and this huge church. I didn't realize, I thought it was like around 1973. Well, mm -hmm. when I saw the movie, Jesus Revolution, oh, yeah. I didn't know when it was till the very end. I saw 1969. That's when my father started. He was, it wasn't him. He wasn't him that built that church. It was the movement because right. it was a movement all over right. the country. Right. And he, and at the end of the movie, I went, it was God. It wasn't it him. Been, right? And that was huge for me. Amen. Putting things into perspective. Yeah. Didn't a lot of Jews come to faith during that Jesus movement? Did a lot uh, of Jews I say? Don't know. I, don't know. I don't know. I was one of those hippies. Oh, you were? You me on the beach in the movie. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes God. We were both hippies. He takes his time yeah. in giving us the understanding. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, and, when it's and, right. and so and, and it's the weight where your patience is tested. But 
Well, if yeah. I hadn't have thought that for the last 57 years, it would not be as impactful at this moment when he's walking right. my world. Everything happens. Right? Everything happens in his time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thankful. Well, when you said 73, all I could think about was, gosh, I was 16. Look at all this happened since I turned 16. I was 63. Wow. So, uh, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Thanks, Moses. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Moses. <laughs> Older enough to have known him personally. Anyway, um, so uh, and, Dennis, yeah. guys, I, I, one at a time, please. Just, Thank you. Okay, great. Dennis, you were saying. Okay, so I heard this last night. We don't forget our sins so that we can recognize how glorious and merciful God is. When he takes it away. Exactly. So he, he's, yeah, it's, uh, he gives us forgiveness. And then, that, just like she said, that uh, once upon a time we were this way, we see that we're not that way any longer. And, and through his grace and mercy. In retrospect, uh, it is in interesting retrospect, yes. to look back and see what he's taken away from you. Yes. Oh Amen. Yes, it's so wonderful. Hallelujah. It's so wonderful. Hallelujah. Yeah. I always uh, can I say one more thing? I know you want to take the show. No, no, the no. heavens no. declare the glory of God. The sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all earth, their words to the end of the world. In them he has sent a tent for the sun. And I can keep going on and on and on. That's Psalms 19. Amen. Amen. Endless. Uh, and uh, good morning, evangelist. And um, so every time you read the word, no matter how many times you break it open on a, on a Shabbat morning, whether it's, uh, whether it's Tanakh, Genesis through uh, Malachi, or, or it's the Brit Hadashah, okay, um, Matthew through uh, Revelation that every time you, no matter where you land, you're going to find something that's going to go, oh, amen. You know, I read that 18 times before or 100 times before, and I didn't see this. Okay, but praise God, that's the word of God. Amen. So, each inch by inch by inch, He's giving you a deeper understanding of what it is that He's trying to communicate to you. Amen. Amen. So that you can, in fact, communicate it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. Amen. Amen. Who else? Anybody else have anything you'd like to share? Rabbi, I'm extremely refreshed watching the revelation, revelation of the young people in the colleges and watching that spread uh, as it should. And I wonder how many people get saved just by the, by the, the, the worship, by how cool it is. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't have any numbers. Okay, but it is refreshing to see the same way that, uh, as depicted in the movie Jesus Revolution, that there are people who are so far removed from the Word of God, and that somebody brings it to their attention, however it manages to happen, because some people think it's cool. <coughs> okay, and uh, but even now, because there is no other way. You know, people seek every imaginable way. I mean, I, I remember going to a, a Buddhist meeting in Los Angeles, California. I was working there as a musician. Okay. Uh, I remember being uh, exploring transcendental meditation and all different kinds of things. And all everybody can think of different ways that you might be seeking. Amen. But when you open the word of God, you know that you know that you know. He's got your attention. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Anybody else? Good morning. Good morning. Anybody else have anything you'd like to share? Okay. All right. Well, we are in uh, Exodus chapter 28. Actually, 27 is where we begin. Okay, Exodus 27, uh, verse 20, just before okay, the end of uh, chapter 27, verse 20, and it is called Tetzaveh, Tetzaveh, 
And you know, what is it? 27. 27 oh, 20 is where we are. Okay. Got it. You yeah. should count you command a people. Okay. okay. And yes, and so uh, Dennis, you said right off the top there, how does that translate? Tetzava is the what? I don't know what you mean. Okay. Okay. You Look at the you just read it. it. You said the it. first line of the shall command. command. You, shall you shall command. command. That's the translation. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that doesn't mean there's that that doesn't mean there's uh, there's options here. A little. No, it's not a suggestion. It's a command. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Amen. All right. But again, uh, as a former English teacher, okay, it, it doesn't. It says you are to command. All right. So the subject is there. You are to command. All right. Um, so. Uh, Let's see here. Okay. I know this is going to sound terrible, but nothing sounds terrible. What's the next word mean? Ben, is it B'nai just Yisrael. Yisrael. Children of Israel. Yeah, B'nai Yisrael. Okay. Uh, and again, for those of you who might be joining us, we are using the TLV, the Tree of Life version. We do so simply Thank because you. it is a direct translation. Can I have more of those? Please? On the book. Oh, napkin. Oh, napkin. Thank you. Praise God. Your life version, okay, because it is uh, directly uh, translated from the Hebrew. Okay. Do I have a reader this morning? Okay, Sheila. Yes. Wonderful. Nice and loud. Also, you are to command B'nai Yisrael that they are to bring to your to you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause a lamp to burn continually. In the tent of meeting outside the curtain, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons will set it in order to burn from evening to morning before Adonai. It will be a statute forever throughout their generations on behalf of B'nai Israel. Be a statute for how long? Forever. Forever. Imagine that. That could be the Holy Spirit. What could be the Holy Spirit? The lamp that has to burn. The lamp that has to burn. Okay, what is it? Does it remind you of anything here? Where do we have a lamp that the has light to burn? That needs to be turned on in here. The light that's supposed to be on. The light that never goes out. Right. Oh, well, not but never, anybody know what it's called? Their tummy. Their tummy. Okay, the eternal light. That's what's hanging out. That's what hangs but over the ark. Yes. Oh, okay. So, yes. can I ask a question? Is this the beginnings of? There was a lamp that was supposed to be continuously lit, and then they, the oil was a. There was a lack of oil. Is this reference to that? Well, the feast of dedication or Hanukkah. Okay, so is this the first time that this is? Um, yes. Okay, and then that, well, henceforth they're supposed to maintain this lamp. Absolutely. Okay. That's Even during the day, or is it at just all, like, all the time? Constantly. Constantly. Got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah. And that's why it was a miracle that some free electricity. Yes, sir. And it was that's why it's a miracle because there was a lack of the amount of oil, but somehow mir miraculously it was maintained. They found enough, so they thought. After the destruction of the temple, the Maccabees, That's when they, they, they found the enough, so they yeah, thought right. that we would burn for a day, and yes. miraculously it burned for eight. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah, and okay. so we this have eight days, days of yeah. Hanukkah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. Rabbi, yes. Rabbi, would you say the Hebrew word again, please? The name for that lamb. Ner Tamid. N E R T A M I D. Ner Tamid. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they're two separate words, right? Two separate words, yeah. yes. Okay, now we're at chapter 28. Exodus chapter 28. Okay. Bring your brother Aaron near with his sons from among B'nai Yisrael so that they may minister to me as a Kohanim. Aaron and his sons, Nadab and Ab Abihu, Abihu, yeah. Eleazar and Edomar. You are to make holy garments for your brother Aaron for splendor and for beauty. You are to speak to all who are skilled, whom, whom I have filled with the spirit of artistry, to make Aaron's garments for consecrating him, so that he may minister to me as a Kohen. These are the garments that they are to make, a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a tunic of, che of checkered work, a turban, and a sash. They are to make holy garments for your brother Aaron and his son, so that he may minister to me as a Kohen. 
They are to use the gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. They are to make the ephod of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen, the work of the skillful craftsman. It is to have two shoulder pieces stitched to the two ends so that, that, that it may be joined together. The skillfully woven band which is upon it, with which it is to be bound, is to be made like the design and from the same piece of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, all right, read uh, nine. You are to take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of B'nai Israel, six of them, six of their names on one stone and the names of the remaining six on the other stone in the order of their birth. Okay, oh, next slide. With the work of a, a gem cutter engraving a seal, etch the two stones in the order of the names of B'nai Israel. Okay. Um, I need stones. Etching the names of the tribes on the stones. Laser? How do they do that? Supernaturally. Supernaturally. Because they didn't have tools of that 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 intricate to do such a thing. So God would have inspired that craftsman to to perform that task. Can God do all things? Yes. Yeah. It says in the word, I have killed it. The story of artistry. Mm -hmm. so God did it. Yeah, but, but then they utilized the tools that they were carving things out. <laughs> uh, uh, the things in Egypt. When they were enslaved. What, what tools? <laughs> what tools would they have been able to engrave? Well, they felt yeah, stone. That's, that's a uh, what, do you, what do you call, what do you call somebody who, who does carving and fine stones like that? Precious stones. Does anybody know what they're what that person is called? An engraver, a craftsman, an engraver, an engraver. An engraver. An engraver. <laughs> That's what they call them today, right? A Jewish a jewelist, a jewelist. How about lapidary? Lapidary. Lapidary. Well, lapidary. Lapidary. One day, that's going to go in your ear. Get out, huh? Can't take this. Okay, or a lapidarist. Okay, the person who carves. Uh, later uh, <laughs> who carves in fine stones not diamonds but in fine stones okay specifically um and if you read talmud you know i'm not just saying to do that i'm just suggesting it's interesting that they make a suggestion as to how this was done anybody remember how that was was that with the worms the worms yes. What? What do you say? There worm. was a worm, a worm that carved oh, the names yes. of the stone. Oh, wow. right. cool. Can God do all things? Very cool. That one was very well so trained. They, they were cool. well trained in the Yes. The word says you are to take the honest Amen. You are to make great. Amen. That's right. That's, it doesn't That's say God right. would do it. Right. Not the worm. Right. Yeah, right. You, and it's. Amen. Right. And it said, with the work of a gem cutter. So there were there was, gem there, cutters. There were gem cutters. And somehow they were provided. Somehow they were provided with the tools in order to do that. Absolutely what was amazing. The name of the profession, I'm sorry, I want to write it down. Lapidary. Uh, lapid, well, lapidary, uh, L A P I D E R Y, or Lapidorist. Lapidorus. Lapidorus. <laughs> Someone who does lapidary. No, I said that's what the oral tradition said. Uh, okay. Yeah. The oral tradition says, guys, the eyes, the the oral tradition will say a lot of things. It also said, Beautiful. The, the oral tradition says, too, that when <laughs> the Lord opened up the Red Sea, that there wasn't just one pathway, there were 12. 12 tunnels, one for each tribe. Okay, and that they were actually the walls of the water were translucent. You could see from one to the other to the other. But if it's not real, if it's not real, it was okay. oral tradition. Right. That's the word of God. Right, he's just saying. Okay, I'm right. just saying yeah. what that says. Okay, be that as it may. 
to take everything into perspective. The oral traditions has a lot of interesting, sometimes beautiful things, okay, but it's man's word, not God's yeah, word. Could be misleading. Could be right. misleading, you think? Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, but again, my question, let's go back. Okay. But think, we also have to remember right. that sometimes it can be inspired as well. We can't always think that yeah. everything that comes from man is bad and because I mean, some of the things can be inspired as well. Precisely. Not to say all of it is. Right. You know, we need to have that discernment. We can't, yeah, we have to have discernment. We can't yeah, just exactly. throw it all, all out. Right. right. And, and the, the, what informs the discernment is if it contradicts the written word, then it's not inspired. Well, Thank right. you so much, yeah, Evangel, sure. for that clarification. Okay. So the other thing that it talks about in the section that we just read is color. What? Black. Purple, scarlet, gold. Are you talking about the onyx stones? And the uh, linen? Onyx black? You see, it's 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 okay. Ifa, tunic, checkered works, guys. Okay, holy garments. Uh, sun, um, let's see here. Uh, they are to make ifa of gold, not just the stones. Uh, blue, purple, scarlet, finely twisted linen. Oh. Okay. Um, woven band, do, 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 a sign, of scarlet, sign of scarlet and finely twisted linen. You are to take two onyx stones and engrave them. We talked about that. Okay. But again, there were many mentions of color here. Okay. Gold. Any thoughts as to what that has to do with? Why gold? What is God? giving us by gold. We know that when we leave here, the streets. We're yeah. going to be walking mm -hmm. streets of gold. Amen. Yes. And I hear a hallelujah. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It talks about red wool. It talks mm -hmm. about uh, blue, uh, purple, mm -hmm. all of these different things. Any idea and suggestion? Anybody know what those things stand for? It may be something, and when they talk about in Revelation about all of these themes in that in this in New Jerusalem, these colors, I, I'm pretty sure I saw streets of gold, it, and purple is like a royal color, regal splendor color. So I'm thinking they have something to do mirroring what's in heaven. Right. In gold. Well, first of all, we're talking about the the robes of the high priest okay. what would be important to god by adorning them the way he's suggesting that we should do well guys you know in a sense this like i'm saying this to his people their people he we are aligned with him maybe maybe it's like uniform color that he wants kind of like a football jersey or something okay obedience obedience this week i studied about remember we talked about the tally yeah. And the blue, why is there one blue? And, and the, the rest were the individuals. Yeah. The tzitzit, yes. And I looked and searched for that. The only thing I could find, and I couldn't find it in the Bible or anything, but what the explanation was, the one blue right. thread that was made from the special mollusk was a representation of God. And all the other uh, undyed threads right. were the people's. And okay. the reason they were intertwined, I couldn't find that in the Bible. So possibly the blue, if it was that important to that, could be a representation, representation of Rebecca. Gold, yeah. purity. Yes. Linda, sorry. I'm a nerd. No, it's actually your thought. I was headed that direction. Absolutely. Yeah, because he's representing uh, the people to God, so he needs to come with those colors, but he's also representing mm -hmm. God to the people, so mm -hmm. he needs to show the people God's he, What's important to him is that, that the high priest be lifted up. He is a representation of, of him, okay, and that they need to be adorned well, mm -hmm. okay, that it needs to be a special presence or um, a costuming, if you will, mm -hmm. okay, if you were a play director, okay? <laughs> uh, but you would make a suggestion that you would be working, if you're doing a full-blown production of a costume or a lighting person, a props person, all these different people 
okay, all of which would come together to make the point of what the play is talking about. Okay, well, this is a particular play and he wants the people adorned a certain way so that it has an impact on the people. Amen. So it's okay, like a master so gold, it's what? It's like a master of ceremonies in a sense, made like an MC. Gold, purity of the heart. Okay. Is that what gold means? Purity of the heart? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Perfect. Okay, red wool. Animal and spirit of man. Two different facets of man. Okay, he is uh, he is part animal, part spirit, <clears throat> okay, creation. Um, blue conveys heaven. Oh, wow. You see it every time you look up. And see it every time you look up. It's yes, very interesting. Just so everybody knows that we're, you know, you just mentioned that it's, we're part animal. To help those evolutionists know that we don't believe we're part animal, I just want to clarify. Right, that. right, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. We are above the animals. Yes, absolutely. Purple, purple, uh, blue and red together, meaning man is uh, both physical, okay, and by that I mean that is he is a uh, kind of animal in creation. That is to say, not we're not grouping him with animals, lion, tiger, that kind of thing. Okay, but in his physical being and spiritual or godly. Okay, okay nobody uh, that God created has a brain like the human being does. Yes. Amen. Amen. Nor can they do this in his own. Oh, the opposable thumb. Anybody understand what that is? The, the opposing, opposing thumb. Oh. They don't have it. What do they call that? It's called prehensile. Prehensile. Oh. Okay. Okay. Don't monkeys do monkeys do, yeah. But, uh, That's why they say we call them. The physical characteristic doesn't separate us in, in his image. Right. So let's stay there. Forget about <laughs> Anyway, all of these colors, if you don't want to dwell on this, okay, but for a specific purpose, okay, in God's mind, that's why he's created all of these things and why he tells us what we need to do. Again, these are not suggestions. This is, as it says at the beginning, this is a commandment. Sonny. Question. When it says we're created in God's image, that means we're created in the spirit Correct. of God, not, not the physical attributes. Yeah. Right. We don't know what he looks like. Right. Okay. Although well, there, there are lots of people who would attempt to form that representation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, like on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Okay, anybody ever seen that? Yeah. Okay. Man is created in the image of God. Women is created so from it. men. There's a difference. No. God is, is a man. Male and female. Yeah, it's she's right. Yeah. He created them, male and female. He created them. Right. We're both. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She's right. Yes. But what I'm telling you is, women came from where? Man, doesn't matter. So the man, point she's making. You're both making the same yes. point. In a way. Right. Yes. Yeah. You guys are right. Yeah. The spirit. Yes. Absolutely. You've got to have a script guy to live. Amen. Okay. So uh again, before I move on, I know Francine, you're here. Uh can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Shabbat Good morning. shalom. Miss you here. Okay, and Angelica, where are you coming in from? You're muted at the moment. Just let me know where you are physically. Are you in Florida? Are you somewhere else? Puerto Rico. I'm not let you know. No, I'm in a jail cell. <laughs> okay. All right, we're picking it up. Uh, Twelve. Yeah. Twelve would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Thanks. Twelve. Huh? Fasten the two stones upon the shoulder, the shoulder pieces of the ephod, to be memorial stones for Bnei Israel. So Aaron is to bear their names before Adonai on his two <laughs> shoulders as a reminder. Fashion filigree settings of gold, along with two chains of pure gold, a braided work. And you will attach the chains to the filigree settings. Make a breastplate of judgment, the work of a skillful craftsman. You are to make it like the design of the ephod in gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. It is to be square and doubled over, a span in length and a span in width. Set within it four rows of jewels, a row of ruby, topaz, and emerald for the for the first row, a turquoise, a sapphire, and a diamond for the second row. 
a Jason, mm -hmm. and a Agate, Agate, and an Ameth Amethyst for the third, <laughs> and a Beryl, an Onyx, and a Jasper for the fourth row. They are to be enclosed in gold filigree settings. The stones are to be engraved with the order of the names of B'nai Israel, 12 according to their names, like the etchings of a signet seal, one corresponding to each name of the 12 tribes. Also, you are to make upon the breastplate braided chains of wreath work from pure gold. Forge on the breastplate two rings of gold and fasten the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. Then attach the two wreath chains of gold on, on the two rings at the ends of the breastplate. The other two ends of the chains you are to place on the two settings and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod in front. So you are to make two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate on the edge of it that is toward the inner side of the ephod. Also make two gold rings and place them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod underneath in the front close to where it is joined above the artfully woven band of the ephod. Then they will bind the breastplate by its rings to the rings of the ephod with a blue thread so that it may be on the skillfully woven band of the ephod, and so that the breastplate will not come loose from it. Aaron will bear the names of B'nai Israel and the breastplate of judgment on his heart whenever he enters the holy place as a continual memorial before Adonai. Also put the Urim and the... Urim and Thummim. Urim and Thummim. Urim and Thummim. With a T-H? Okay, Thummim. Within the breastplate of judgment. So they will be on Aaron's heart when he goes in before Adonai. Okay, just to, to go back, okay, when he's talking about the, the two stones that were engraved, that were worn on the, on the shoulders, okay? Okay, Urim and Thummim, anybody know what that is? Yeah. He consulted the Lord. Uh, I read something where they said that when um, the priest consulted the Lord, these Urim and Thummim would light up to give the judgment, whether it's a God has given his Step yes, or if he was not. So they were crucial, you know. Amen. Yes, concerning decisions. Okay. Uh, this, you could do a whole lesson on that. David, mm -hmm. so I'm picturing a breastplate because it says that like an armor. Right. Metal. Well, it was metal? virtually a square. Okay. It was hung around the priest's neck. Okay. And how big was it? It says that it was one cubit by one cubit. Okay. This is a cubit from here to here. Okay. So it wasn't necessarily formed a breastplate. No, no, no. no. It was square. It was more like what, like square. a platter or something? Yeah. Right. yeah. It hung. Right. Okay. Like a giant um, amulet. And I should, okay. yeah. I'm sorry, I should have uh, brought a picture. Okay, which would make it clear. But if you go, if you Google yeah. priest breastplate, okay, okay it'll, it'll give you an amulet. But you got it right there. Yeah. Great. Okay. So that and the e fod would. Okay, got it. That's just that's a good. name for shoulder cap. <laughs> okay. Okay, as uh, Linda. Is bringing that around so you yes. can see a picture of it because Pressure. pictures yeah. worth a thousand words, they say, yeah. right? Yeah, it's really, okay, but it's very clear. You know, how many sons killing the parent had again? What do you think? Yes, how many? Uh, mm -hmm. four, 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 minus two. Well, minus two, yeah. two of them got taken out, mm -hmm. right. Okay, um, where are we, 29? 31. 31? Okay, 31, Sheila? Uh, it's, uh, we were, we're uh, before before that the last sentence. Okay. Um, Aaron will bear the judgment of B'nai Israel on his heart before Adonai continually. All right, now we're 31, okay? Yes. We're in chapter 28, verse 31, of those of you who are Lost your place. Go on. You are to make the robe of the ephod entirely a blue. It is to have a hole for the head in the center and a binding of woven hook around the hole as a collar so that it may not be torn. On the hem of it, you are to make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet all around the hem with golden bells between them, one golden bell and a pomegranate, then another golden bell and a pomegranate on the hem of the robe all around. It must be worn by Aaron whenever he ministers. The sound will be heard when he goes into the holy place before Adonai and when he comes out so that he does not die. Okay. Uh, just as a note, I just happen to notice that 
uh, in my in my scribble in my margins. Okay, I wrote down uh, Urim and through to uh, um guilty or innocent. Okay, used to reveal God's will. Okay, as far as the judgment is concerned, to re to confirm or refute the suspicion of guilt. Now, can I ask? Okay. Is yes. this when it says also put the Urim, so it's a physical stone. tangible. Oh, it's a stone. Yes. And this is these two are actual stones, or they just call them that. No, no, no. They are actual stones. So if I go to a gemology book, I can find Urim and Thurim. No, <laughs> there you in the past. In the past. Okay. Yes. In I just fact, wasn't sure if it's like a wool. If I'm not mistaken, since the time of spiritual. Nehemiah, those things have not been used. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, okay, shows. but you just mentioned uh, the pomegranates. Okay, we know we've discussed that many times. Okay, a uh, bell, a pomegranate, a bell, a pomegranate, all around the hem of the garment. Okay, bells were for in case they died. In case something the happened, it was not clean. Oh, yeah, the Lord took right. them out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so he had a rope attached to his. Earlobe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to his foot? To his foot. Oh. Clearly. So that it could be taken out of there. Okay, but a pomegranate? A decorative pomegranate. What is that? 58, 58 seeds or something. How many? 613. Really? Buy one and yeah. count the seeds. How many? Yeah, 613. 613. Like the number no, of commandments. Yeah. I am just laying around the commandments. Same as the number yeah. of laws. I've heard okay. people say, like in the Christian religion, they try to say that the pomegranate was really the fruit and not the apple. I was just curious if that's a was, Jewish uh, tradition. Apples. Right, exactly. Not even apple. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah. just the fruit. Oranges, is maybe. There. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Back then, you know what? I'm not there. Okay. Okay, guys. Oh, please. pomegranate. Sir. So there was a prior purification before the priest even entered the presence of God because what man could stay clean. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Good question. Okay. John was when he, he put the pomegranate on there. Was this before it was stone on the hem of the garment? Yeah. Bell pomegranate all around before the they came up with their own 613 laws, or did they already have that? Did we receive the commandments yet? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. What chapter are we in? Uh, 28. What chapter did the commandments come in? 20. Twenty-two, ten, six hundred and thirteen go all through the Torah. Correct. Right. So maybe. Right. This is for the temple. What is? I mean, the, this oh, entire yeah. uh, process with the breastplate. Yeah. This is for the presentation of the temple. Correct. Well, for the high priest. They receive specifically. The... Okay, because we're getting to the point where those high priests will be consecrated. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm coming <laughs> to Twenty-nine. Okay, where are we? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. <laughs> Also, you are to make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it, like the engravings of a seal, holy to Adonai. Attach it with a violet cord onto the turban on the front of the turban. So it will rest on Aaron's forehead, so that Aaron will bear away the iniquity committed regarding the holy things which B'nai Israel set apart as all their holy gifts. Sounds familiar? So that Aaron will bear the iniquity? Yeah, yeah like Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Like Yeshua. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Is Does everything here point to Yeshua? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Is there something important about the reason they used violet instead of purple? Because that's a totally different color. Could it's it a mean different something color. different? Yeah. Um, uh, again, uh, yeah, I, I don't have. Yeah. Oh, I thought maybe, you know, I'm just checking for tradition that yeah. I don't know about. No. But it just jumped out at me. It's like, why was it purple, purple, purple? And now we've got a beautiful violet. I'll ask him when I see it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Don't forget, this is the beginning of the tradition. Per giving to right. Precisely. Right. So Not there's got to be some is, reasons exactly. for that, right? Okay. All right. Again. It is to be always 
it is be yeah that's not right it is be always to be on his forehead it's always to be on his forehead so that they may have favor before adonai it's not right there 39 okay. you are to weave the tunic and checkered work of fine linen make a turban of fine linen and make a sash the work of a color weaver for aaron's sons you are to make tunic sashes and headwear for them for splendor and for beauty put them on aaron your brother and on his sons with him and anoint them consecrate them and sanctify them so that they may minister to me as Kohanim. You are to make linen undergarments for them to cover the skin of their nakedness from the hips to the thighs. They are to be worn by Aaron and his sons when they go into the tent of meeting or when they approach the altar to minister in the holy place so that they do not become subject to guilt and die. It is to be a statute forever to him and to his offspring after. Amen. Amen. All right, moving right along. Chapter 29. This is Exodus 29, how to consecrate the Kohanim. Again, Kohanim, Thanks. priests. Okay, <laughs> again, is there any part of that word that sounds familiar? Know anybody by the name of Cohen? <laughs> okay, most likely they are descendants of the priests. You mean the real Cohen's, uh, like the lawyer Cohen? Uh, I, Cohen, C-O-H-E-N, uh, -E -E or some form of that word. Okay, absolutely. Okay, I mean, unless you're married, you're, you're the male, obviously. Okay. So uh, is Cohen referring to the high priest and the Levites are usually have Levi yeah, I mean, as the name? Correct. Mm. Correct. Okay. Uh, 29. 29. Yes. Now, this is what you are to do to consecrate them so that they may minister as Kohanim. Take one young bull and two rams without blemish, along with mitz. mitz Masa. cakes of masa mixed with oil and masa wavers spread with oil make them from fine wheat flour you are to put them into one basket and present them along with the bull and the two rams you are to bring aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of meeting and wash them with water then take the garments and put the tunic on aaron along with the robe the ephod and the breastplate Gird him with the art artfully woven band of the ephod set the turban on his head and put the holy coronet on the turban then you are to take the anointing oil, pour it upon his head, and anoint him. Also, you are to bring his sons and put tunics on them. <laughs> you are to gird Aaron and his sons with sashes, tie headwear on them, and they shall hold the priesthood by a perpetual statute. In this way, you are to consecrate Aaron and his sons. <clears throat> you are to bring the bull before the tent of meetings, and Aaron and his sons are to lay their hands on its head. You are to slaughter the bull before Adonai at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Then take the bull, blood of the bull, put it on the horns of the altar with your finger, and pour out all the remaining blood at the base of the altar. Okay, stop again. Placing their hands on the head of the bull. This is what I heard before that I mentioned a couple weeks ago that uh, they wanted peace. They don't want the animals going crazy and all disruptive and stuff. And, and, uh, they wanted peace on the animal, so it was a peaceful uh, transition. Yes. To just you know relax the animal and just you know but this is a different reason what he's going to tell you what it is but i believe that it also they wanted that too but there's more right <laughs> okay i'm sorry <laughs> Thank you. sorry that's that's good it is good sure well but not only that but well, scripture is yeah. very specific it says it's if you're going to take God eggs from a chicken yeah. make sure that the mother chicken is not there yes okay? yes it's a call to compassion Okay, but what else? What is the other reason why one would place? Because we see all these sacrifices. What is the reason? Peter? Of sin. The like sin. That? Yeah. That why? Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. Okay. Yeah, Transference. Yeah. Transference of the sin. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You from the person to the animal. Right. The animal is taking it upon. That's the same thing they did with the, the lamb that okay. was right. sent away. Yeah. Okay. The Passover yeah. lamb. Yeah, you're creating the innocence of the animals, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. lamb was taken yeah. and sent off the edge of a cliff. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not very compassionate, but but it means no. to me. Okay. See, but again, when right. you when they were when they were getting ready for their very first Passover, okay, they were they were told to go out and get a lamb. Okay, bring it into the house. Okay. If that's your sure we'll visit. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, well, why would they bring it into the house? Tie it to the bedpost of the house. 
to know him, to know the animal, to be familiar with him. To what happens when you bring an animal into the house? Comes part of the family. Yes, you become I, close, close to it. Close. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So mm -hmm. you observe it during that period of time Looks to make sure right. that it is without blemish. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's 13. go on. 13. 13. Also take all the fat that covers the innards, the lobe above the liver, the two kidneys, along with the fat that is on them, and burn them on the altar. But the meat of the bull, along with its skin and its dung, you are to burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. Okay, tell me what you think about that. Who created these beings? God. Uh, he's being awfully specific, is he? Okay, he didn't just say, do this to the animal. He's very specific about the parts of the animal, the lobe, about the liver, the two kidneys, along with the fat, the blah, blah, blah. Okay, all these things are very, okay, all of those have a particular reason for him, okay, um, and and has significance to him, and therefore have significance to us, amen? Right. Okay, the so. The is the obedience. Obedience. What is he referring to when he says the low above the river? I don't know. I wasn't really big on science. And all that. Oh, it's just, it's just a, yeah, it's just, it's just a part, just a, part. Um, part. probably it's nothing but, but that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like we have an ear lobe. Right. So you got a little bit of gunk that they mm -hmm. want. He wants that to go too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so Rabbi, does that mean that um we're not supposed to uh we're actually not supposed to eat the kidneys of any animal then, or is that right to be kosher or not? No, I say that. Uh, okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. He's very specific in Leviticus about what we should eat and not to eat. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, no cheeseburgers for you. Okay. No, wrong. <laughs> Okay, he didn't say that. All in the list. What? He did say that Popeyes was okay. <laughs> well, no, Popeyes. They actually, they actually put pork. They actually put pork in the uh, in the beans and rice. They actually put pork in the beans and rice. A lot of people don't know that. They actually no, put pork. No, no, yeah, they put pork in the beans and rice. So you got to be careful yeah, there. I would yeah. not be apt to order that. <laughs> okay, be that as it may were. Yeah. Then take one ram, have Aaron and his sons lay their hands upon the head of the ram, then slaughter the ram, take its blood, and sprinkle it around the altar. You are to cut the ram into pieces, wash its innards and its legs, and place them with its head on other and other pieces. Then you are to offer the whole ram up in smoke on the altar. It is a burnt offering to Adonai, a sweet aroma, an offering made by fire to Adonai. Then take the other ram and have Aaron and his sons lay their hands upon the head of the, that ram. Slaughter the ram, take his blood, and dab it on the tip of the right ear, ear of Aaron, on the tip of the right ears of his sons, on the thumb of their right hands, and on the big toes of their right feet. Then pour the blood on the altar all around. Also, you are to take some of the blood that is on the altar, along with the anointing oil, and sprinkle it on Aaron, on Aaron's, Aaron and his garments, and on his sons and their garments. In this way, he and his garments are to be consecrated along with his sons and their garments. Okay, time out. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So was this done once a year? How often was this? This done? was done. This was specifically on the consecrating of the priest. Okay, so it was the priest, one shot deal. Yeah. So the priest. Each time a priest became a priest? Well, right now there was only so just those three, right? Yeah. The because, father and two sons. Okay, so okay. I see. So that's why we're. <coughs> right. my, for my question. My question is, you are to take some of the blood that's on the altar. Okay. Uh, before that, in uh, twenty, was it twenty? Uh, slow the ram. Take its blood. Dab it on the tip of the right ear of Aaron. On the tip of the right ears of his sons. The thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot. Maybe the extremities. Your ears. They you consecrate in your ears what you hear, your your hands what you do, your feet and what you where you, you go. go. So the where you go. Yeah. Each stray in things darn, you know, like that song, go oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see over your ears. I, I that concept comes to me as you're saying it. That's what I'm hearing. 
When I heard get that? the right side, right side, right side, is there any importance being only one is side? Anything that God says is not important. Right, exactly. Okay, significant, okay? What does he say? He says, turn right and go straight. Who sits on the right side of God? <laughs> Right, the right side Amen. of God. Amen. Right. Okay. okay. So if you're left handed, so forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you not I have one question. Yes. The aroma. What makes the aroma so sweet to the nostril of God? Mm -hmm. Have you ever Adam. driven by a barbecue? Dear God. Have you ever smelled lamb? It's obedience. But do you think the aroma is more of our obedience, or does he enjoy our obedience and then enjoy the smell? As a dieter, I know what no, that feels God, like. God, 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 God. About obedience. The aroma is the effect. People sin, the Bible says, the stench. The obedience and the aroma is is right. then doing the right thing per what right. the direction. Okay. And we enjoy the smell, and it makes it relevant to us because we smell the aroma. Amen. Okay. Well, well, maybe that's a right, right, right. But I mean, it kind of connects. Yeah. So sometimes you have to be obedient before you get the understanding. Correct. Absolutely. Probably always. Absolutely. You yeah, have to you faith. have to have that moment of I give up. Okay, moving along, guys. Twenty two. Twenty two. Moreover, take some of the fat from the ram, along with the fat tail, the fat that covers the innards, the covering over the liver, the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, along with the right thigh, because it is a ram of consecration. Also, take one loaf of bread, one cake of oiled bread, and one wafer out of the basket of masa that is before Adonai. You are to put the entirety, the entirety into Aaron's hands and the hands of his sons and present them as a wave offering before Adonai. Then you are to take them out of their hands and offer them up in smoke on the altar on top of the burnt offering as a sweet aroma before Adonai, an offering made by fire to Adonai. Oh, also take the rest of Aaron's ram of consecration and wave it as a wave offering before Adonai. So it will be your portion. Set apart the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution, which is waved and offered up from the ram of consecration, including what belongs to Aaron and his sons. It is to belong to Aaron and his sons as their due share forever from B'nai Israel, because it is a contribution. It is to be a contribution from B'nai Israel from their sacrifices, of fellowship offerings, their contribution to Adonai. The holy garments of Aaron are to pass to his sons after him, to be anointed in them and to be consecrated in them. The son that succeeds him as Kohen, who comes into the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place, is to be is to put them on for seven days. You are to take the ram of consecration and boil its meat in a holy place. Aaron and his sons are to eat the meat of the ram and the bread that is in the basket and the entrance of the tent of meeting. They are to eat those things with which atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them. But a layman is not to eat them because they are holy. If some of the meat of the consecration or the bread remains until the morning, you are to burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten because it is holy. Mm -hmm. Do for Aaron and his sons everything according to what I have commanded you. Consecrate them for seven days. Each day you are to offer a bull as a sin <coughs> offering, apart from the other offerings of atonement. Also purify the altar when you make atonement for it and anoint it in order to sanctify it. You are okay, to make so, okay, sure. okay. seven days. What's special about seven? <laughs> it is the number of completion. Completion. completion yeah. Perfection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and the rest. Uh, do we deal with other sevens? The six, world in six days and on the seventh they rested. Amen. Okay. And you suggested that we do the same. The same thing with Shemitah. Okay, what about Shemitah? Right. right. The land forming. The seven years, yeah. Seven mm -hmm. years are to all right. In the seventh year, you let the land lay fallow. Okay, do not let it let the land rest so that it can rejuvenate itself. We, we don't do that. No, okay? we don't. As a result, our land is depleted. All the natural things that we normally should be taking out of it gone. Okay, 
I think there's also the seven things that God hates. Such as? It's in the, it's in the Bible. Yeah, my grandfather was a farmer and he would always keep sections of the land and that section on the seventh year would not be touched and then he would always know to give some land time to rejuvenate and so replenish. I come from a very long line of very religious Baptists. So yeah, they did everything. Baptist, huh? Yeah, yeah, I know. My father was a holy roller. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he was there. He was happy. <laughs> no. Earl Holy Roller. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, but I'm no, I can't. I was just reflecting on holy rollers. <laughs> I was thinking of yeah, I heard people that who, while, huh? as a no, as a teenager, people were coming to me and talking to me about Jesus. Yeah, you know, and I would refer to them as yeah, as Bible thumpers, holy uh, rollers, yeah, yeah, yeah. the dark, Jewish, you know, Jesus. Oh, yeah, right, so, exactly. So, uh, that's so true, right? You know, without those people today, many of us would not be here, oh, of yeah. course, right? Oh, yeah. So I never, yeah. I never looked down to those bubble thumps first. That's right. Oh, yeah. Looked down by Amen. Him. Amen. <laughs> so, yeah. Sometimes people make fun of them, but that's what we're supposed to be today. Precisely. Because we're not Bible thumpers. Look how the world is now. Exactly. Right. I know. Amen. 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 Yeah. All right. Where are we? Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven guys. Okay. You are to make atonement. Okay. You are to make atonement for the altar for seven days and so sanctify it. Your altar will be most holy and whatever touches it will become holy. Now, this is what you are to offer upon the altar. Two one-year-old lambs each day continually. You are to offer one lamb in the morning and the other lamb at dusk. Offer along with the first lamb a tenth of an ephah, a fine flour mixed with a fourth of a hen of beaten oil and a fourth of a hen of wine as a drink offering. The other lamb you are to offer at dusk like the grain offering and drink offering of the morning as a sweet aroma an offering made by fire to Adonai. It is to be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the entrance of the tent of meeting before Adonai. There I will meet with you to speak with you there. I will meet with B'nai Israel there so it will be sanctified by my glory. So I will sanctify the tent of meeting and the altar. I will also sanctify Aaron and his sons to minister to me as Kohanim. So I will dwell among the Israel and be their God. Then they will know that I am, that I am Adonai, their God, who brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, so that I may live among them. I am Adonai. Amen. Amen. Their God. Okay. So again, the whole purpose of the tabernacle, the priesthood, everything was for the purpose of Him establishing His presence. I will dwell among them. He obviously perceived. That it was important that they had a physical representation of him. Amen. Not only through the priests, but obviously through the Shekinah glory that mm -hmm. occupied the temple. Amen. The Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, again, he knew that in our humanism that we needed to see things. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think of Moses going before the Israelites when he, when the Lord first sent him back to the Israelites mm -hmm. and said, hey, I'm going to lead you out of the land of Egypt. Right. <laughs> you know, we're slaves here. We've been here for 400 years. You're going to take us out by whose authority? Mm -hmm. Okay. And to where? And to where? And Jesus, uh, Yeshua also said, I'm telling you these things now. You don't understand them. If I tell you the things of heaven, how would you understand them? Right. So it's not easy for a human being to fathom the things of heaven. So this is Absolutely. close. You know what I mean? So God had to give us something. What was his answer to them when he, when they said, you know, to whom, who, who said this to you, that you should take us out of here? He said, God of your fathers. Mm. Specifically, mm. I will be who I will be. Yud Hey Vod Hey. Okay, otherwise, Yahweh. 
Okay, yeah, that you it came down down to that, but it was so holy that you cannot spell out his name. Yud He Vav He, I will be who I will be. Okay, or as some translations say incorrectly, I am that I am. Okay, but I will be who I will be, meaning I'm going to take on any form I need to take on in order to get your attention. Okay, that's why we cannot say this is what Jesus looked like. Mm -hmm. This is what God looks like. Right. Okay, I'm going to be whoever I need to be in order to occupy this place in your head so that you listen to my voice. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. You know, at the same time, he could say, you know, that all you got to do is look back at Joseph. Joseph said, when you get out of here, take my bones with you. He saw that. He looked at it. And he knew what God was going to do. Well, he wasn't the only one. Yeah. Right? Okay. Right. All right. Chapter 30. Yes. You are to make an altar of acacia wood for burning incense. It is to be square, one cubit in length, one cubit wide, and two cubits high. The horns must be of one piece with it. You are to overlay it with pure gold on top, all around the sides and over the horns. Also, you are to make a crown of gold for it all around. Make two golden rings for it under the crown on the two sides, and they will be holders for poles to carry it. Make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You are to set it in front of the curtain that is in front of the Ark of the Testimony, in front of the atonement cover that is over the testimony, where I will meet with you. Aaron must burn sweet spices of incense there every morning. When he attends to the lamps, he is to burn it. Also, when Aaron keeps the lamps lit at dusk, he must burn it. There must be incense continually before Adonai throughout your generations. You must not offer up unauthorized incense on it, nor should any burnt offering or grain offering be there nor should you pour any drink offering there. Aaron is to make atonement upon the horns once a year with the blood of the sin offering throughout your generations. It is most holy to Adonai. Amen, amen, and amen. Okay, um, and again, you see here, obviously, the, the next section here, starting with chapter, verse 11, 30, 11, is the parasha called Kitisa, Isa, excuse me, Okay, um, and I don't know, I spoke to Moses, but, uh, and it's important, guys, that you, you could read this ahead, so we're not just reading it for the first time here, but again, uh, if we go back to <clears throat> 9, verse 9, 30, verse 9, you must not offer up unauthorized incense on it, nor should any burnt offering, offer grain offering be there, what is that? make you think of Aaron's Aaron's sons. eldest sons yeah what did they do they offered up uh yeah incense, in other words there was incense. a very specific recipe for the incense mm -hmm. okay but they decided to conjure up their own okay because why because what was their <laughs> state of mind they were strained they were what? They were straying. They were, they were straying. They were straying from God. They okay. Were like, yeah, they've been lazy. They just like. So the bells sometimes. on the bottom of their garments cease to ring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or I can do it better than. Let me try my recipe. Look up so Peter. Yes, sir. Well, today, look at all the procedures that God gave him <clears> in those days for priests to go before God in the presence of God. Yeah. Look at all these things. But for us today, we go before his son, Yeshua. Because we couldn't do this today, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to go before Yeshua. We couldn't do this Yeshua. today or ever, which <laughs> is why we, but there was one who did. Yeshua. Amen. So that's Amen. the only way we can so have that relationship. Again, after 400 years of emptiness, mm -hmm. if you will. Okay, then he comes back and says, this is what I need to explain to you. Okay, because <laughs> there's a difference between explaining and explaining. Okay, you need to know exactly what it is that I meant. This is why the, the big hang up between Yeshua and the Pharisees. The word says this. Okay, they're much more concerned about keeping every letter of the law versus the spirit that was intended to go with it. But they couldn't and keep then, it. They couldn't keep and it. Yeshua sure knew it. He knew their hearts. There's one other verse that kind of jumped out at me. Yes. In verse 43, I will meet with the name Israel there, but so it will be sanctified by his glory. 
knowing that we are God's temple, we're sanctified by his glory. Amen. Ah, oh, that's just beautiful. Amen. Amen. And I speak to that in the commentary this morning. Okay, yeah. we are what? Okay. All right. Um, any questions about this? Okay, I mean, we can break it down and break it down and break it down. But again, uh, hands. I'm just trying to read my scribble and my and the thing. Whatever we do, hands, feet. We were talking about that, Denise. Okay, wherever we go, not walking in temptation. Amen. Are we constantly being tempted by stuff that is not of God? Amen. Okay, so we need to exercise. We need to stop. Keep thinking of the railroad signs. Stop, look, and listen. Okay, some people don't do that. They get run over by bright light. Yeah. Okay. Which is Satan. <laughs> well, but I mean, the guard rails come down and they sold the value on the tracks. They don't want to hear that. Yeah, uh, no, uh, seriously. Say, 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 say. We have guard rails yeah. that come down, right? Yeah. Don't go here, don't cut across the tracks, go around the rails, okay? Follow my instruction. Amen. Mm -hmm. Stop, look, and listen. Mm -hmm. Okay, use discernment. John. When I was hauling steel up in north of Orlando, there was a set of railroad tracks that didn't have any flashing lights. Mm -hmm. And there was, there was, and there were, they just had a sign up that said, look out for the cars. And so I would pull up and you had tree line and you could only see a limited distance. And to get over that, I had to rev up my engine and just go for it kind of thing. Because a train could come around that quick. I'm sure it's changed now, but you see stuff like that. And now they got all these warning signs for people. And they still, oh, I'm in such a hurry. It wasn't meant for me. Yeah. Uh -huh. This was somebody. Uh -huh. I can't Susan is actually, actually sure. time. Yeah. When the uh, when the green yeah. gates come down, mm -hmm. it's only ten seconds between that and the train comes bright line. Yeah. Okay, and it's moving like mm -hmm. an eighty miles an hour plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, um, again, mm -hmm. there are rules that are there for us to follow for our own protection. If you are obedient to those rules, then we have sustainability. Amen. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, and promises. Okay, the if then theory. If you do this, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions about people that? Actually think, people actually think they that the yeah, uh, they're doing it for God. It's like, no, you're doing it for you. You need to be saved. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Use wisdom. Use wisdom. Okay. That's why it's so perplexing when we see all the stuff that's going around us. Okay, going down and all the uh, the, the crimes going on right now. Okay. So, amen. Yeah. All right. Uh, Father, we just come before you right now. We lift you up and exalt you. We thank you for this book of instruction, Lord. It never existed before this time, Lord. So we just praise you and thank you. You will be our God. We and our, we will be your people, Lord. And Lord, we will be obedient to these things that you've given us. Lord, and not only that, but we will uh, be your disciples. So we will be your <laughs> messenger people to share all of this with people who are coming into your, uh, so that people can also come into your kingdom, Lord. Okay, because our time in this place, right here on this planet, is very brief. <clears throat> okay, so we need to share with other people so that they too Amen. can understand what we understand. So we lift you up and exalt you. We praise you. We ask for your blessings on this service, everything that we're doing today, on the skit that's being performed for Purim, which actually starts on sundown on Monday, um, and for everything, for our upcoming plans, uh, everything that we do, because we do it as unto you. Yes. We just praise you. We thank you for this time together yes. and for the spirit of attendance here, Lord, this morning, both virtually and in person, 
will lift you up and exalt you. In the precious name of Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. 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 the house of the risen sun. House of the